Husband left me and our newborn baby for another woman. We've been married for three years. I'm 30, he's 34. I had a baby six weeks ago. After giving birth, my husband was cold and so distant. I thought that he needed time to adjust to the new normal, but turns out he was actually planning to leave us. Two weeks ago, he said to me that it's not working out anymore and he doesn't want to be married to me. The news broke my heart. I kept asking him why he was doing this to our family and his response was... I can't pretend anymore. He took all of his clothes and left two days later. I just had this gut feeling that he was seeing someone else, so I got into his email and found hotel reservations. He brought her on a vacation when I thought he was on a business trip, searched her name on Facebook, and saw him in the background of her pictures. Turns out this has been going on for a year. I'm so hurt dealing with this and taking care of a newborn baby. I've been crying all day for the past two weeks and being delusional thinking he'll come back to us when he realizes he made a mistake. I texted him when I found out about the other woman and he ignored me. Then hours later, asked how our son was doing, so I blocked him. I've been feeling so lost and have no appetite, haven't been eating. As a result, my milk supply is really low. I don't know what to do anymore. Let's read some relevant comments here. User 1 says, Do you have family or friends who can help support you? I know you don't feel ready, but you need legal advice as to your entitlements. You need him to pay child support at the very least. And OP says, My parents have been really supportive. OP on if she is able to change the locks of the house. OP says to this, Don't think I'm legally allowed to change the locks. And now here's an update. This morning, my husband came back, saying he made a mistake leaving his family and wants to work things out. These past weeks have been so rough. I've cried myself to sleep many nights, all while taking care of a baby. I'm still hurting and feel even worse now that he's back. Coming back doesn't erase all the emotional stress he's caused me. He left me and our baby when we needed him the most. I'm so lost and confused. Now let's read some more relevant comments. User 1 says, I wonder if she even knew he was married and or had a pregnant wife slash newborn baby. I bet she recently found out. Just my guess. OP says, I think she knew. He told me he left her. I don't believe him. I actually sent her a message and I'm currently waiting on a response. User 2 says, You need to speak with a lawyer because him being at the house instead of you may work against you in the divorce, if it matters. OP says, I asked him to leave and he refused, so I left instead. I spoke to an attorney. They said I can't stop him from staying in our home. And then OP questioning if her husband was having a mental breakdown or not. OP says, If that's the case, he was having a mental breakdown even before I got pregnant? He was having an affair before I even got pregnant, and it all unfolded when I gave birth. Update. These are the text messages from the other woman. Text with AP and I. This confirms he's a liar and has been lying to both of us. My previous post was very very vague, so I thought I'd provide more detail. When my husband came back yesterday, he apologized and said it was a huge mistake. He admitted he wasn't thinking straight and would do anything to make things right between us. He wants to be here for me and our son, repeatedly asking what he needs to do to make things right. I told him I didn't want to see him right now and that it was best if he left, but he refused and kept begging to stay, saying he was sorry and calling himself an idiot who doesn't deserve me. I asked why he did this to us, and he admitted he wasn't thinking clearly and said nothing can justify his horrible actions. Now here are the transcripts of the text. And for this, O.W. is going to be the other woman. So O.W. says, It's me. I don't use Messenger, so I thought it would be better to text you for starters. He told me y'all were separated and he'd started the divorce process. O.W. says, I feel so stupid now believing him. And O.P. says, How long were y'all seeing each other? And did you know about our son all this time? O.W. says, I met him a year ago at Starbucks, where he paid for my coffee. That moment marked the beginning of our relationship. A few months ago, I discovered about the baby and decided to break things off. However, he insisted that it didn't mean anything and kept expressing his desire to be with me. O.W. also says, He moved in with me three weeks ago. Till this morning, he woke up and said he's going back to his family. O.P. says, He told me weeks ago, the same time he moved in with you, that it wasn't working with us anymore, and he left me and our four-week-old. O.W. says, OMG, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I wouldn't let him move in with me had I known. OP says, you don't need to apologize. You didn't know. And then OW says, I'm stuck in a lease I can't afford by myself because he convinced me to get this apartment for us. 
only to bail on me. OP says, how old are you? OW, 25. Please feel free to ask me anything you want to know. Were you ever separated? OP says, we were never separated and lived together till a few weeks after I gave birth. Did he tell you why we separated? Then OW says, he didn't say much. It was very brief. All he mentioned was that things weren't working out between you two and something about growing apart. When I found out you were pregnant, he said you were trying to trap him with the baby. OOP says, Our child was planned, actually, and it was his idea to begin with. It's clear as day he's a pathological liar. OW says, Is he back at your house, or was that also one of his lies? OP says, He came back, but we're not getting back together. OW says, Good for you. He's an a-hole. For the record, I'm done with him too. Now let's read some more relevant comments here. How did OP feel after talking with the other woman? OP says, Thank you. I tried my best to be understanding and not get upset. This woman owes me nothing. I can't be mad at her. Then OP on if the other woman knew about the baby. She was with the husband for a year before OP found out. OP to this replies, She knew, but my guess is she really loved him and didn't care. Regardless, this is all on him. He was lying to both of us. I think she just wanted confirmation, since we both know he lies about everything. If she chooses to take him back, that's on her. Disclaimer, OP is updated after the BORU was posted. So, per the rules, update is included. So here's update number three. In the process of filing for a divorce, the stress has been overwhelming. It even landed me in the hospital. My blood pressure was extremely high, and I was severely dehydrated. My attorney advised me to move back into the house until the divorce is finalized. Since then, things have been very strange. My husband is now trying to win me over, but it's too late. I strongly dislike him for leaving me for another woman. He's been taking care of our son during the day to give me breaks, cooking meals, and even bringing food to me. I haven't been eating it. Instead, I throw it in the trash and have told him to stop cooking for me. He brought me flowers, which I also threw away. He's been trying to talk to me, but I walk away and lock myself in my bedroom. I'm staying in the guest room. Last night, he asked if we could watch a movie together. I said no and told him to leave me alone. He even cried and begged for another chance, but I can't get over what he's done to me. Despite everything, I found myself crying tonight because I feel bad for treating him poorly. Why am I feeling bad for someone who disregarded my feelings and left me alone with our baby when I needed him the most? In no way, shape, or form is OP the a-hole here. This guy cheated and not only had an affair, but also lied to the woman that he was having the affair with. So he doesn't deserve any forgiveness, and I think that OP is absolutely doing the right thing by closing him off, working on this divorce, and then just getting as far away from him as possible. So good job. Story 2. Future MIL, 54F, called me, 23F, stupid, and now I'm considering calling off the wedding. How do I approach the situation? I, 23F, am engaged to John. 24M. We are together for five years. We want to get married in July 2025. I always thought that his family liked me because we get along well. He has two older brothers, 26M, 29M, both married. Honestly, I was very excited to have them all as my in-laws. They were always kind to me. Some kind of important information. About a year ago, when I was scrolling on Instagram, I saw a profile that was kind of cringy, but in a cute way. It was an older woman's profile who shared inspirational quotes. I remember one particular post, and it was something in the lines of, Only stupid people pretend to know everything. Don't pretend. Just ask. Honestly, this quote changed me in a lot of ways. Before that, I was always worried that I might embarrass myself if I don't know something, and after reading that quote, I realized that if I always pretend that I know everything, then I'll miss out on actually getting to learn about things. So I decided to change my habits and start admitting that sometimes I genuinely don't know. Someone is talking about the war in Kosovo? Okay, sure, but first, let me ask some questions so I can fully understand what we're talking about. And I ask a lot of questions sometimes. I sometimes even open the Notes app and write in some questions that I later want to find answers to. These are my latest. 1. How does time work in the black hole? 2. Why some snails have shells and others don't? 3. What food is okay for ducks? 4. How does the light bulb work? The old ones with the gas inside them. And 5. Does everyone see colors the same? And how can we know that? Sorry for the long introduction, but it was kind of necessary for understanding what kind of person I am. I know that sometimes I might come across as annoying. Now onto the problem. His parents hosted a small barbecue last weekend only for the family. So it was the mom, 54F, dad, 59M, brothers, 26M, 29M, and their wives, 
27F and 27F. I was the last person who showed up because I had to work late. I entered the house and when I was walking towards the back of the house into the backyard, I heard John's mom talking about me. To be honest, she wasn't talking about me, more like mocking me. I heard her say in a high-pitched voice, How does the sun work? Where should I put the fork? Why does no one like me? How do I wipe my ass? I just stood there. I had this sinking feeling. I couldn't move, so I just stood there. And I heard them all laughing. One of the wives said, I actually don't mind her always asking questions. I think it's cute. And it made me feel hopeful that they will say something like, Yeah, sure, we're just playing. We love that. But none of them did. Instead, the mom replied, It's not cute. She's just stupid. And after that, they laughed again. I heard John laughing. My heart kind of broke in that moment because he didn't even say one positive thing. He didn't defend me. He just laughed. I quietly turned around and left the house. I texted John that I got sick and have to stay at home. Now I'm wondering, how should I approach this situation? We live together, and I sleep in the guest bedroom for now, and I use the excuse that I don't want him to get sick from being around me. I can't ignore him forever, and I can't pretend to be sick anymore, because it's been too long. I'm not sure how do I proceed. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding. I'm considering talking to them about this, but I'm also worried that they won't be honest with me. I can't marry him if he really thinks I'm stupid, but I also can't marry into a family who thinks so little of me. But maybe it was a joke, and I shouldn't take it so seriously. I'm so torn apart and every day I convince myself a bit more that it's okay and sometimes we should all laugh about ourselves. Now I feel like I'm just going crazy. I would really appreciate some advice. TLDR. Overheard future MIL calling me stupid and my fiance laughed. Considering leaving him, I'm wondering if it might just be a joke and maybe a misunderstanding. Need advice on how to navigate the situation. Edit. There are many comments saying that they cannot stand people like me. I agree that sometimes I can be a bit too much with the questions, but with that being said, I still think I'm within reason. I don't do it around people I just met. I rarely do it at parties or other gatherings. I usually do it with people who are close to me, who I think wouldn't judge me, or with people who specifically have knowledge about something and are willing to share it. If I'm a part of a conversation, I'm not rude and I'm not interrupting. I usually just ask one or two questions. If a discussion is about the climate change, I'm not asking about monkeys if you know what I'm saying. I'm also not a complete dumbass. I don't ask questions which generally would be considered dumb to other people. Those I just write in the notes and check answers later in the internet. I'm capable of reading, so I make good use of it. But after all, I still do ask questions a lot. Update post three days later. First of all, I wanted to say thank you to the people who reached out to answer my questions about black holes, snails, ducks, light bulbs, and other stuff. I would love to have you as my friends. For the other people who said I should just shut up, I don't really care if you find me annoying or hard to be around. I'm okay with that. I don't exist to please everyone. I'm just here for a good time, have my own interests, and learn. I didn't expect my post to gain so much attention, but I'm so grateful for the advice. Most of you told me to break up with him and at the very least confront him, so that's what I decided to do. You gave me a push and confidence to do it. But before I did that, I texted the wife of John's brother, the one who said she liked me asking questions. I asked if we could meet up for coffee. She said sure. We met, and I didn't see the point in pretending to her that I didn't hear their conversation. So after some small talk, I just said, I heard you all talking about me during the barbecue. She immediately got sad and said she feels embarrassed. She explained that it wasn't a joke, wasn't out of context, that it was just mean and hurtful. She said she's sorry for not defending me more, but I said that it's okay and I understand. I told her that I don't blame her for anything. I just wanted to make sure that I understand the situation and see it for what it really was. And it really was laughing about me behind my back, just bullying. At this point, I just had to confront John. In my last post, so many comments were saying that he will probably try gaslighting me. And you were right. We were having dinner together for the first time since the barbecue happened, because before I tried my best to avoid him. Yes, I know, not very mature of me, but other than you guys, I don't really have a strong support system. My family and best friends are hundreds of kilometers away. I only have two good friends here. I was so stressed, I thought I was going to pass out. My legs were shaking, and I was terrified, because I knew deep down that this is the moment when my five-year relationship goes down the drain. I looked him in the eyes and asked, How does the sun work? He looked confused. So I followed with, Where should I put my fork? Why does nobody like me? At this point, realization hit him, and he started nervously laughing. I said I was there, and I heard them. After the initial shock passed, he got mad. He said it's rude to eavesdrop. I said it's rude to bully people. He 
tried telling me that it was just a joke, that I shouldn't be so uptight, that it really was funny. I said that I didn't find it funny and went to the guest room to calm down. He started panicking. He was asking me to please talk to him. He was much more apologetic and said that he will be 100% honest with me. I asked if his mother made similar comments before the barbecue. He said yes. I asked him if he ever defended me. He said he tries to. I don't know if I believe him. He told me he loves me and respects me. I don't know if I believe that either. I said that I love him too, but I need a break. He's all I've ever known. He was my first and only partner. I have no outside perspective of this. I have no experience. I need a moment to think. I'll be going to my friend's house for a while to think everything through. The apartment has his name on the lease anyway. After I gathered some of my things and left, he kept texting me non-stop. He tried calling, but I didn't respond. I was very hurt because he tried to belittle my feelings and only later when he realized that I might break up with him, started apologizing. The next day, I decided to give him another chance to explain himself and I came back to the apartment. He seemed very sad and tired. He said that he told his mother that I overheard them. I said I don't care. It's his time to step up and show me that he cares. I'm not interested in an apology from his mother. I'm already done with her. I can't put up with this behavior and mocking me like we're in primary school. I saw a comment saying that probably her ego is hurting. I think it's true. She never got the chance or never had a desire to have an education. She is a very good homemaker, but outside of that, she doesn't have many interests of her own. If I'm asking her about making tomato soup, she'll be talking for 30 minutes, lecturing me about adding enough sugar, but not too much. She will lecture anyone who's willing to listen. But anytime someone is talking about something she's not familiar with, she gets defensive and tries to imply that nobody cares about that, and if it's not relevant to her, it shouldn't be discussed. Once again, he tried telling me that I should relax because it was only a joke, and at this point, I had had enough. I took off my ring and I told him that his behavior is a joke and I can't be the punchline. I told him that I wish him and his family the best and to look in the mirror to check if they're really as superior as they think they are. I said I'm going to be back with my friend soon to pick up the rest of my stuff and to not contact me again unless it's about moving my things out. And that's it. I'm done. Thank you all for the advice. Without you, I wouldn't have had the confidence to leave this man. I know I deserve better. I can't be with someone who can't stand up for me, and I wouldn't be able to feel comfortable around his family, so I'm done with the relationship. I hope they will treat his next girlfriend better. Thank you again, Reddit, for the advice. Let's read some relevant comments here. One commenter says, Keep on being curious, not judgmental. And OP says, Same. I absolutely love that show. I watched it with my ex, and it's funny that he didn't like Ted and thought that his character was not relatable and silly. To be honest, we all should have Ted's strength and positivity sometimes. Another commenter says, OP, your ex-MIL can still go and get an education. Many have, and there's still time. There's no excuse for what she did, and her saying that and acting like that shows how uneducated she is. OP says, I think so too. I believe it's never too late to start learning something new and continue education. In my uni, there was an old lady in her 70s who recently graduated and everyone was just so proud of her. In my country, university is free, so the barrier of entry isn't as bad as in the US, for example. Okay, first of all, free college education? What country is she from? If anyone knows, let us know in the comments. And secondly, good for OP for calling out the family on their BS and, and leaving this guy behind. Good thing you broke it off while you're engaged and not married. It's so much easier now to just walk away and you know, make new friends on Reddit and move on with your life. Bravo. But seriously, what country are you from? Story 3. Am I the a-hole for banning my 5-year-old sister from my wedding unless she gets therapy before the wedding? I just want to start off by saying I, 24F, love my baby sister more than anything in the world. I drive a three-row car because it was able to fit her and my other siblings, 9F7M, and some of their friends. My fiancé and I watch the kids after school every day, and they spend the night with us two to four days a week. My fiancé is great with the kids, and they adore him. My fiancé proposed six months ago, and when we told the kids, the other the other two were excited, but Evie, the five-year-old, was furious. She started crying and hitting me because she wanted to marry him. And if I marry him, she can't. She refused to speak to me for almost a week, and now she's mostly okay, but she gets mad at me and starts crying and hitting me anytime she sees me kiss him. She was supposed to be our flower girl, but I really don't think she'll be able to sit through the wedding without some kind of outburst. So I called our dad, told him about all of this, and said that she won't be allowed to attend the wedding unless she starts seeing a therapist before the wedding. The wedding is in September, so he has a couple of months to get her in therapy. He's saying she doesn't need therapy. She's just a five-year-old with a crush on my fiancé. I'm overreacting, and she won't forgive me
me if I exclude her from the wedding? Am I the a-hole for banning her unless he gets her therapy? Edit. We've tried everything. We've talked about her behavior, her feelings, that what she's doing isn't acceptable, that my fiancé will still be in her life, but nothing helped. She goes to time out right when she starts hitting and kicking. She loses toys. She's left outings early. And my fiancé refuses to play with her after because he doesn't play with anyone that hits. This is not normal five-year-old behavior. There's nothing else we can do. We will not hit her. And to everyone saying her parents need to parent, how do you suggest I do that? They'll neglect the kids whether they have them full or part-time. Let's read some relevant comments. OOP responds to multiple questions on addressing her youngest sister's behavior issues. OOP says, I know she's not making elaborate plans to steal him, fiancé, or anything, but for the past six months, she's thrown violent tantrums every time I kiss him or we get too close on the couch or he sits next to me at a restaurant. She hits, kicks, punches, bites me hard enough to draw blood, and pulls my hair. Plus, it's not because she was mad when we originally told her. It's the violent tantrums that have happened nearly every time we've seen her since we told her that we're getting married. My fiancé even suggested that we stop watching her for my safety. Plus, yes, we talk to her about it. She gets a timeout every time she throws a tantrum, and my fiancé stops playing with her for the next few hours. And when she asks why, he tells her that he doesn't like playing with people that hit other people. Beyond that, there isn't anything we can do besides refusing to keep her. Her parents are not very involved. Now here's an update. My dad dropped the kids off last night, and while I was giving the youngest a bath, I started to get dizzy and nauseous, so I called my fiancé to get her out of the bath and in bed. He got her out of the bath and gave her a towel, then focused on me. That set her off, so she started her hitting, slash kicking, slash pushing, and when my fiancé let go of me to grab her, she was able to push me over, and I cracked my head on the edge of the bathtub. It was a mess. My fiancé called 911 on his phone while using mine to call my dad to get the kids. I hurt my head and neck and will be in the hospital for the next few days. When my dad picked the kids up, my fiancé told him we won't be watching them anymore unless we become their guardians. OOP responds to if her dad and his wife take care of the kids besides herself. OOP says, they don't take care of their kids. My fiancé and I did when they stayed with us, and the nine-year-old does it when they're at my dad's house. OOP and her younger sibling's living situation at their home. OOP says, the kids are pretty much neglected at home. OOP on her budget and if she is able to take care of her siblings. OOP says, my fiancé and I can afford to take care of them. Right now, the kids and I are all on my dad's health insurance, but my work offers great health insurance if we need it. Therapy is included in both health plans. We were able to purchase a house by ourselves, but we were looking at two to three bedrooms room houses or condos, and his mom thought something like four to five rooms in a good school district would be better in the long run, so we won't have to move when it's time to start growing our family. Those houses were out of our budget, so as our wedding present, she's helping us get the bigger house. OP clarifies the relationships between herself and her younger siblings, and why she was taking care of them. OP says, Because they're not my kids. They're my half-siblings that I've been taking care of. We have different moms. Their mom doesn't seem to want anything to do with the kids if she can't get cute pictures for her Insta. Dad has never been very involved. Probably shouldn't be laughing at this, but this, to me, was a pretty funny story. I'm just envisioning this grown man and woman just get totally bodied by a five-year-old. <laughs> like, no, I don't think that it's unusual behavior for a five-year-old. I mean, how do you really compartmentalize or quantify that, right? Uh, I do think that if she's having outbursts like this, you don't outright ban her from the wedding, but maybe don't make her your flower girl, right? Don't put her front and center stage and maybe have her sit in the back with somebody that can quietly escort her out of the wedding venue if she decides to do something crazy. So I don't think that she's an a-hole, talking about OP, for wanting to do something about it, but to outright ban a five-year-old from the wedding, yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah, you should be able to control a five-year-old. Anyway, moving on. Story four. My, 30F, husband's brother, 40M, and his wife, 36F, told me my husband is actually gay and our marriage is his front. A month ago, my sister-in-law came to my house with her daughter. I also have a six-month-old baby. Anyways, everything was going pretty normal. We talked, made dinner, and vented to each other about normal marriage slash life stuff. Then things took a turn. My husband and I moved into our house six months prior to this visit with my sister-in-law. So literally one week after I gave birth, we moved into this house. My husband works. A lot. 
so the majority of caring for our baby is on me, and that's okay, but for the first three, maybe four months, I was really in the trenches. So anyway, she starts to tell me that her and my husband's brother are very upset with us because we haven't invited them over for dinner yet. Huh? So at this point, I'm just letting her vent on why she's upset with us. Even though they live 20-some minutes away and have never asked to come see their new nephew, or she just doesn't talk to me at all? LOL. This visit was rare, by the way. It was really out of the blue. Anyways, she's going on on that she's pissed because I haven't cooked dinner for her family yet. Okay, sorry. I've been extremely overwhelmed with my baby, first time mom, and his medical issues and bills and just day-to-day -day life. I honestly haven't even thought of it. I also struggled with PPD pretty badly, and I was on medication for it. It was literally the last thing on my mind, so I apologized. Then she starts to tell me that a week prior at her barbecue that my husband and I were at, that her and her husband, my husband's brother, thought that my husband looked depressed. I was honestly confused because I've never noticed that, and my husband and I talk, like really talk about everything, and I was just surprised she said that. I asked her why do they think he seems depressed, and she says, before I tell you, you have to promise me you won't tell your husband. So now I'm terrified, anxious, curious, all of the above, and I told her I promised I wouldn't say anything. Then, in front of her daughter, who's almost 10 years old, starts to tell me that she and my brother-in-law think that my husband is depressed because he's actually gay and can't live his truth. Then, word for word, she told me, quote, we honestly think he married you and had a baby with you as a front. Holy sh! What? So now I'm actually feeling weird. She went into detail that she thinks my husband and his best friend for over 10 years, who is married with children, are having or were having a secret relationship. What? My SIL has known my husband for over 15 years. How could she say this to me after everything I've been through? Even if it was true, why? You know what I mean? So she left my house and I honestly was overthinking it for days before I finally told my husband. He is extremely upset. My brother-in-law is the type of man that if I would have said that to his wife about him, he would have came for my throat. Me and my husband decided not to say anything yet, but it's getting hard. It's been about a month. After she left my house that night, she has not said a word to me since. Like, how do you lay that on someone and go mute? We're family. I've been married to my husband almost three years now, and I absolutely believe him, but that's besides the point. I need to know what is the correct way to confront them. I'm sorry, but you cannot come into my house and tell me my entire life is fake. Also, I want to add, a week ago it was there, my SIL and BIL's, other child's birthday. The party was outside and 94 degrees out. I didn't feel comfortable having my baby outside in that heat. When we told them that, and that we weren't coming to the party because of that, they told us they didn't give a F if we came and hung the phone up and haven't said a word since. My husband is pissed and hurt, and so am I, and I'm so tired of letting things slide with his family. How do my husband and I navigate this issue? Thanks. First update. My husband will be saying something to his brother soon. I will update everyone. I'm cutting off my SIL completely. I will update everyone who wants to know when it happens and what exactly does happen. Thank you for all the advice. Update as of 7-1. My husband asked his brother about it and he said he had no idea what was said. He asked his wife in front of both of us and she said she never said it and I'm a liar and that's where it stands as of now. Let's read some relevant comments on this. OOP on if her SIL thinks her husband is hiding something from her. Oh, I'm 1 million percent sure he isn't even bisexual. I was with him for a while before we got married and I have zero doubts about it. And honestly, if he did have some gay things going on before he knew me, who cares? It's the past, and it isn't her place either way, IMO. I feel like I'm always the bigger person with my husband's family, and I'm just so tired of it. But, thank you for the advice. Plus, I said I don't care what my husband did in his past because I don't. I posted about the issue of his family thinking they can say whatever the hell they want with no repercussions. OP on how she's handling the situation. OP says, I think so too. If it was my brother that said it, I would have raised hell. My husband's family are difficult people, and I'm terrified my MIL is going to blame me for the fallout, even though I didn't do anything at all. That's how it's always been with her, and I'm just worried about it. We did tell my in-laws what she said. My MIL said, why would she say that? And then she said that my husband and I shouldn't say anything. So now I'm afraid too, but my husband and I talked again about it last night, and we are not letting this go. I want to punch her in the face. Like, I can't explain to you how upset I am that I sat there and told her my PPD struggles for the first time, and then she told me that. 
I even texted my SIL two weeks after she told me what she told me, and I said, I can't sleep, and I can't stop thinking about what she told me, IDK what to do. And all she said was, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here, and that she was sorry. Now here's another update. So my husband confronted his brother. His brother said he knew nothing about what his wife said. He then asked his wife in front of my dad and husband, and she denied ever saying it. She called me a liar. Then, my husband's brother told me he's, quote, been with his wife for 20 years and she would never lie to him, and that maybe I stretched a little bit of what she said to me. LOL. I definitely did not. Not even a little bit. So that's where it stands as of now. My husband believes me. That's all that matters. If I wanted to stir the pot, I could have thought of something better than this. Now let's read a relevant comment here. The commenter says, she's totally psycho. Who does that? OP says, I know. And now you're going to lie on top of it? Yeah, so that last little exchange that we just read pretty much covers my thoughts on this. I think that this woman is just kind of pathological and stirring the pot for no reason, making up these lies, and for whatever reason, trying to be a homewrecker. So she needs to be called out. I know we didn't really get to see the resolution here, but as long as OP and her husband have worked things out, that's really all that matters. Story 5. My, 21F, boyfriend, 22M, spent 4K on a Master Chief suit when he doesn't even have a job. I've been with my boyfriend for about a year now, and he's a really nice and sweet person. He always makes sure to give me his all, and genuinely cares about my happiness. Today I got home from work, and automatically I notice a huge shipping box open by the front door. I'm intrigued, but since it's empty, I just keep walking towards the living room. Then I see him, on the couch, in a full Master Chief suit. I'm like, babe, is that you? He's like, oh, hey babe, how was work? And I'm like, good, what's up with the Master Chief suit? He's like, you like it? I got it online, and it was simply too awesome to pass up. And I ask, it's really nice. How much was it? He says, 4000 And I said, oh, that's funny. How much was it really? And he says, no, really, it was 4000 So at this point, I'm livid. I start yelling and asking him how he afforded it, and the whole ordeal was very heated. I find out that he put it on a credit card, and I just get so pissed that I leave. We barely make ends meet now, so it boggles me how he doesn't even have a job, yet decides that 4K on a Master Chief costume is fine. What do I do at this point? Now let's read the top comments here. User 1 says, you leave him. He is too incompetent when it comes to money and dealing with the real world. User 2 says, run. This dude will go bankrupt before he figures out how money works. This is not hyperbole. I mean the literal legal definition of bankruptcy. I'm 40 and I saw it with my peer group. User 3 says, he spent $4,000 on a cosplay outfit that literally achieved nothing. The only place or time he can wear it is at conventions and Halloween. The guy could be Jeff Bezos' bastard, and he still wasted $4,000 he put on a likely 20% interest rate credit card. User 4 says, sell him on eBay. User 5 says, if you sell him dressed in the suit, that's $4,001 in your pocket. Also, what is a Master Chief suit? User 6 says, Master Chief is the main protagonist from Halo. User 7 says, a 4K Master Chief suit must be freaking awesome. User 5 says again, that's what I'm saying. Someone link me to this suit, LMAO. User 8 says, important. You are not able to wear the suit by yourself without any help from at least one assistant. Who did he get to help him put on the suit then? User 9 says, crap. That actually looks pretty cool, lol. On the other hand, it's pretty funny imagining Master Chief just chilling on a sofa, lol. Now here's an update that came two days later. First of all, I just want to appreciate all of the comments on the original post. I didn't expect it to blow up like it did, and thanks for the silver. So after the post, I decided to confront my BF about the suit and hopefully talk some sense into him. After a long, heated argument, he decided he had had enough and stormed out and left my house. In the argument, he defended his action, saying that it was his money to spend and that he doesn't give me crap when I go out and buy a Louis Vuitton. Anyways, so he wouldn't budge at all. He left the house and after several hours of no contact, I was curious where he'd be staying the night as he lives in my house. I go on Life360 expecting to see him at his mother's or friends, but he's at a house I don't recognize. I text him and ask him where he's at, and he responds saying it's none of my business. Alright, what the F ever. Next day I wake up to another text, this message being from his phone but not him. The message read, You're a selfish female dog who can't even respect BF's wishes to look like his and my favorite video game character. He's a sexy man both inside the suit and out, so don't bother texting BF again. So yeah, 
I guess he'd been cheating on me? I don't even care at this point, just ready to move on. I left his crap on my porch and told him he has 48 hours to come get it. Then I canceled his phone line, which I pay for, on my Verizon account. Definitely not how I expected this to go. Let's read some more top comments here. User 1 says, I have this mental image of some dude in the Master Chief suit with a mean girl clinging to his back and hissing at OP. Effin' yikes. User 2 says, I shouldn't laugh, but that's one heck of an image. User 3 says, I really want to know if the argument and the leaving afterwards all happened while he was in the Master Chief suit. Just a dude arguing with his girl, storming outside, jumping into his warthog to teabag another girl. This has to be straight up RB and the Chief vibes. User 4 says, he probably wrote that text himself to make you jealous. User 5 says, I love this idea. He's sulking on some dude's couch still in the armor. Yeah, this will show her what a catch I am that someone else thinks I'm hot wearing this and out of it. She'll come running back to me next day. Well, crap. At least I have this kick-ass costume in my phone. Oh, crap. Yeah, this is just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> like, just the visual of this argument breaking out in the living room while the guy's wearing a Master Chief suit. Like, who even are you, man? There's a lot to unpack here, but I don't think it's even worth the time looking into. He's 22 years old, very young, very immature, and, uh, you know, hopefully he got his money's worth there. <laughs> Story 6. I, 17M, am in love with the GM of my weekly D&D &D group, 32F. How do I tell her? I, 17M, am in love with the GM of my weekly D&D &D group, 32F. How do I tell her? Four years ago, I started going to a weekly D&D &D game at my local game shop. The game is run by a 32-year-old woman, Amber. Amber has been in a relationship with a 27-year-old guy, Rob, the entire time I've known her. But Rob recently proposed to Amber. I don't think Rob is good for her. He forgot her birthday last year, and I've never seen them do anything romantic together. Not even kiss, despite the fact that he's been coming to these games the whole time. Rob doesn't have a lucrative career, either. He's got his PhD and barely makes ends meet as an adjunct professor, only because he's living off of the money Amber makes. I'm starting college next year, and I'm majoring in computer science. I'll be making way more money, and I'll be able to take way better care of her. I'm just not talking out of my ass, either. I'm pretty sure she has some kind of feelings for me, because she's bought me dinner a few times on game night, and she always tells me how smart and funny I am. She seems super interested in my college plans, and she asked me if I had a girlfriend last year. I know it seems weird, since she's 15 years older than me, but if you saw us together, you'd understand. TLDR, I'm in love with my GM, and I'm a better choice for her than her boyfriend. How do I get her to understand that? Let's read relevant comments here. User 1 says, She doesn't like you as anything more than a friend, and she's engaged. I'm cringing at your paragraph about going into comp sci and being better than her partner because of that. OP says, Well, working in tech, I'll make a lot more than her boyfriend. That means she won't have to work, and we'll have money to go do things that they won't. User 2 says, Dude, I hate to break it to you, but no, this is a terrible idea. You're 17, you're not even a legal adult, and you know nothing about their relationship. This woman is old enough to actually be your mother. OP says, she's only 15 years older than me. My parents are 14 years apart in age. 17 is the age of consent in my state. User 13 says, Dude, she's engaged. Even if she wasn't, she isn't going to want to be with a high school student. She'll be at least 36 by the time you graduate college. It isn't just the age difference. You're in totally different places in your lives. She's looking to get married and possibly have kids. You're going to be going to parties and studying for finals. Focus on finding a girl closer to your own age. OP says, I don't mind having kids right after college. She can stay home and take care of them, like my mom did. We'll be able to afford it. User 4 says, I totally get why you're into this woman, but I'm afraid to be deserving of the chance that she changes her mind with R. You also have to be the kind of person to wait it out and not make any moves to sabotage her relationship. You might be seeing her behaviors in the wrong light, and the focus on comparing yourself to the person she's with really doesn't make you seem like someone to root for or help. Wait it out. If the feelings become a problem, remove yourself before considering getting between them. And if nothing happens for too long, maybe try to meet other women her age slash like her. Both your best shot at her and changing her mind about are, and second best shot at coming out of things alright if nothing happens between you. OP says, If I wait too long, she'll be married to him, and they'll probably have a kid, and I'm not interested in raising his kids. Here's an update post that came one month later. Hi. 
I'll try to keep this brief. I usually spend my Fridays at a local hobby store playing D&D and MTG. Over the years I've been playing there, I got a crush on one of the employees, Amber. She has a boyfriend, Rob, but I felt like I had to say something or I'd regret it. So I did. She told me she was flattered but not interested. I'm not the type to give up. And my dad told me persistence pays off, so I started bringing her flowers every day, both at her work and her apartment. I didn't stalk her. She lives close to the store, and I've seen her walk home a few times. She took me aside on Monday and told me that she felt it would be best if I dropped out of the D&D group she runs for the store. I asked her if she was also kicking Rob out of the group. She said no, claiming that I was harassing her. Tuesday, I went in and complained to the store owner, telling him about the situation and how it's unfair that she's kicking me for having feelings for her, but not her boyfriend. I told him how unprofessional it is to hang out with her boyfriend at work. The owner told me he'd investigate and asked for my phone number so he could get back to me. This morning, I got a phone call from him that after speaking with Amber and the other employees, I'm harassing her and he's decided to ban me from the store. I tried to tell him they were lying to him, but he hung up on me. I want to sue him for punishing me for something I didn't do. Is there a specific type of attorney that specializes in this? Does the fact that I'm black and the rest of them are white give me any grounds for a discrimination lawsuit? Listen, kid, I got one word for you. Stop. Moving on. Story 7. Update. Am I the a-hole for going to a pre-planned vacation with my family rather than my boyfriend's mom's funeral? I'm a teacher, so I get about two months off every summer, but my mom, sister, aunt, and cousin all work regular nine-to-five jobs with two to three weeks off a year, so it's really difficult to organize time for trips where we can all go. We managed to schedule a girl's trip to Cabo from June 1st to 9th, made payments, almost 3k a person, several weeks prior to the trip, and we're all very excited to go to Mexico and bond. I'm best friends with my sister and cousin, and my mom and aunt are identical twins, so we're all a very close group. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years. His family lives across the country, so I only see them twice a year, and it's usually pretty quick. No real one-on-one bonding with anyone in his family, but we're all definitely friendly with one another. We like each other's posts on Facebook slash Instagram, send happy birthday wishes, stuff like that. A few days before we left, my boyfriend's mom passed away unexpectedly. I spent days attached to his hip, supporting him, wrote the email to his work explaining what happened, cleaning the apartment, making sure he ate, called his dad and siblings, and expressed my condolences, booked his flight, helped him pack, etc. He asked me to go to the funeral with him. I felt so, so, so bad telling him no. I hardly knew his mom and feel like I already committed myself to the trip with my family. He was heartbroken and begged me to go with him for support, but I told him that his whole family is there and that if anything, it's a special time for them all to recount memories of their mother, slash wife, slash sister, slash daughter. He asked if he gave me $1,500. Could I go on the trip sometime later? You have two more months off. I know you won't get some deposits back, so I'll give you this money. And I honestly felt so bad, but the thing isn't the money. Although, obviously, as a teacher, I'm not swimming in money, but it's about how this is the one time a year that the women I'm closest to can go together. My mom and aunt told me, We want you to come with us, but it's ultimately up to you. Whereas my cousin and sister were like, You should definitely come with us. It'll ruin the trip for us if you're not there. Just come, etc. My boyfriend was upset and left mad at me. I called slash texted a bunch, but he didn't respond until days later. Anyways, I went to Mexico and came back on the 9th, and things have been weird with us. Sometimes he's really close with me like usual. Other times, I can tell he's mad I didn't go with him. He said he's not furious at me, but just disappointed and sad that I chose to go party instead of be there with him. Says he would have dropped anything for me. Keeps emphasizing that I have two months of vacation, but he doesn't get that no one else in the group has that kind of vacation time. I really couldn't reschedule. Update. It's been over two years since my previous post, which can be found in my post history. A lot has changed. I've taken the time to really think about what happened. What I came down to is that y'all were right that someone's mother dying is huge and I should have given more support. I sat down and spoke to Jamie about my feelings. This conversation happened about three months after the funeral. He said he was upset with what happened but wanted to move on from the argument because our relationship means a lot to him. I told him I'd been thinking about it and what it all came down to is that my feelings for him weren't as strong as they should be. If we've been together for two and a half years and my feelings are starting to fade, then we should take a break. He was upset and crying a lot, but I told him that this would be better for both of us. This way, we can think about what really matters and how much of the past to hold on to, as well as the love we have for each other. I ended up calling him about a month after that conversation and breaking things off. He's a great guy and I should have been better to him. Things took a very sad turn for him and I'll miss him always. 
I think I could have and should have handled things better than I did. Thank you all. So I know we didn't get to see any comment responses here, but I don't think that she's the a-hole. I really don't. A, this is your boyfriend, not fiancé, not husband, so technically you're not even family. And two, it's not like you don't want to go. You had previous plans with your family with a very limited window of when you could exact those plans and something happened completely outside of your control. And I think that, you know, the boyfriend understandably is hurt, but man, you know, just kind of felt like he was trying to to gaslight her and make her feel guilty. You know, the rest of his family is at the funeral and no, I don't, I don't think she's the a-hole at all. Sad it didn't work out. Story eight. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband's affair baby's family to either come get the kid or I'm calling CPS? My, F-53, soon-to-be ex-husband Roger, 47, whom I forgave for his affair, came home with a baby four months ago. His girlfriend, 22, could not handle it anymore and brought the baby to him at work and left. To the best of his knowledge, she is in Spain. I allowed him to stay so long as I didn't have to do anything. Anything. Well, about a month ago, Roger had a heart attack. It didn't kill him, more's the pity, but he's very weak and incapable of doing anything for himself. Since he isn't up and about, he cannot care for his child. He also cannot drop off and pick up his son at daycare. I've been helping out, but I'm done. My kids are full grown. I shouldn't be having grandkids anytime soon. I do not have any desire to care for a baby. I told Roger that I want a divorce, and I contacted the mother's parents. I know the father through friends. I said they had until Friday to come get their grandchild, or I was calling Child Protective Services. They just left with the baby. But they scolded me for being so cold towards a baby that had done me no harm. I view that child differently. Roger is recovering, and I will be moving out. The house is in his name, but I have never contributed to it. I have the equivalent of 22 years of rent and interest put away. As per our prenup, my savings are my own. I work, and I don't need anything out of this marriage except myself. My kids tried telling me to stay and help their father. I said that they were welcome to come over and help him, cleaning himself and the baby. Both declined what I felt was a fair offer. I do not feel that I'm acting badly. However, Roger, our children, his child's family, and a few mutual friends think I am. Perhaps writing this out and seeing the responses will give me clarity. Let's jump into some relevant comments here. One commenter says, NTA, that child was not your responsibility. Yes, it was innocent, but you're literally not responsible for raising it. You should have divorced Roger long ago. OP says, and God forbid something happens, I literally cannot make any decisions regarding medical care or anything. Another commenter says, fake NTA. Seriously? This kid is four months old. You could not have possibly forgiven anyone for this level of betrayal. If you've been married for decades, it's your house, so get what you're owed. OOP says, I think the baby is almost a year old. The house was a premarital asset on our prenup. Another commenter says, I looked at lots of these comments, OP. You are NTA for returning the baby to blood relatives who can look after it. But don't be TA to yourself by abandoning your home without consulting an attorney and making sure you aren't entitled to some of the equity or some of his retirement savings. Don't walk away without getting all that is yours. You said that you have 22 years worth of savings. That's not a lifetime worth. You might need more to be okay, and you should make sure to get it on your way out. OP replies, I have a little over a million dollars in investments. I'll be fine. He paid for everything. I kept all my money. This comment was downvoted, but OOP's reply made me laugh. So the commenter says, women these days are cold AF. And OOP replies, I can forward you their info if you're volunteering to take over. And then here's an update post that came almost one month later. I'm no longer divorcing Roger. There were complications from his heart attack and he's passed away. I'm conflicted. He was the love of my love, but also a cheating piece of trash. To the best of my knowledge, the mother will not return from Europe. The child is currently with her parents. They asked me what I wanted to do. I recommended adoption. Not that I adopt the child, that they put the child up for adoption. They didn't like that suggestion. Neither did my children. They said that I'm being cold and cruel. I suggested that since the child was related to them and not to me, that they step up. Neither has accepted that suggestion either. I was the sole beneficiary of Roger's estate, so I imagine lawyers will be involved in getting the child some sort of support. I will pay whatever is ordered by the court out of the estate. I will not pay one cent out of my money. 
That is all I have to say on this matter. Let's read some more relevant comments here. This is the ages of OP's kids. They are adults. And then responding to a now deleted comment, I found out about the affair over a year ago. Nothing about this is convenient. And then another commenter that was downvoted said, So apparently the affair wasn't that much of a problem, as you said you forgave him for that. But after he has a heart attack, you decide to divorce him? It just doesn't add up. And OP says, I was not responsible for the child. The commenter says, true, that doesn't explain the divorce. I mean, you can divide for whatever reason. You do you. To me, however, infidelity seems like a better reason to divorce than having a heart attack. OP says, I was not to care for the child at all. It was all on Roger. Can you explain how a bedridden man was to care for an infant? The commenter says, I agree, you have zero responsibility to the child. However, if your kids did adopt, how would you feel about that as the baby would have been your grandchild? OP says, adopted grandchildren are great. And then, responding to another, says, new grandchild. I would do my best to treat them as such. Then another downvoted commenter says, Roger's will may have omitted the child due to the child not being around when it was written. The child should inherit a portion. The child should be eligible for Social Security survivor benefits. Baby needs a lawyer, ASAP. And OOP replies, Roger's will also omitted his two adult children. Then another downvoted commenter says, You were evil. You wished him dead. Now he is. I hope you at least feel a little remorse for what you said. OOP says, I don't. He broke me. And then responding to another commenter, We were getting divorced for a reason. And then another downvoted commenter says, 70% of the posts here are fake. Yeah, my husband just died and I'm dealing with this child situation on top of it. Def gonna post on Reddit. And OOP says, The situation has been dealt with. I was asked by several people for an update. I have now fulfilled those requests. OOP responds to so many people telling her she needs to help the child. Why does anyone think I have the right to place the child with anyone besides family? I'm not in any way related to this child. And the child is currently with their grandparents, blood relatives, with standing in legal matters. And then here is just a timeline of OP's listing of events. So one, OP found out about the affair a year ago, let's say May 2023, at the time she forgave the husband. Two, in January-ish of this year, four months from the OG post, the baby was dropped off, husband promised to take care of the baby. Three, the husband had a heart attack sometime in April, a month before the OG post. And four, sometime between May and June of 2024, the husband passed away. Yep, NTA here. She didn't ask for any of this. I mean, it, it sounds cold, it sounds cruel, but she didn't ask for this in any way, shape, or form. And by placing the child in the care and custody of actual blood relatives, it'll be much better for the, the infant in the long run. So, tough situation with the heart attack and Mr. Roger dying, but NTA.